Welcome back to Coding Shorts. I'm Sean Wildermuth. What I want to talk about today is Tailwind 4. Tailwind 4 is going through a makeover. It's changing a bunch of stuff under the covers, though the way you've been using it up to now should stay the same. But I wanted to give you a little preview. This is an alpha build I'll be showing you, so don't depend on it being perfect or certainly nowhere close ready to production. I want you to see what's coming down the pipe. Before we dive into that, I just wanted to mention that next week I'll be doing a side-to-side -side comparison with Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, and JetBrains Writer to talk about which one is best for working with C Sharp. If you want to be alerted about that, don't forget to subscribe below. And as always, your questions are welcome down in the comment section. So let's get started. So here we are in Visual Studio Code. And let me go ahead and run this in Edge real quick, just so I can show you what the project is. This is a really simple project that shows a bunch of film. And we can decide whether we want all the films, films that have passed the Bechtel test or have failed the Bechtel test, and the navigation works. But, of course, what you're looking at here is awful, right? It is not a great website. Maybe back in the days it would have been okay, but we need to use some things. And we're going to use Tailwind to pretty this up. In this particular video, I'm not going to be going through the entire skinning of this website. I'm just going to show you some things that really relate to the new version of Tailwind. So let's go back to the console and let's go ahead and install Tailwind.next. And so if you go and install Tailwind at next, that's going to install that new version, that early version of Tailwind CSS. This isn't production ready, as I've said probably too many times already. We're also going to get the Vite integration. So this is one of the changes that I like. They now have a Vite integration, so you can integrate directly into Vite without needing to have post CSS anymore. It also does auto prefixing for you without needing to use auto prefix. So the amount of things that are needed to get this working are going to be smaller and faster. Mostly faster because the core engine has been rewritten in Rust, whereas a lot of the other tooling has been left in JavaScript. If you're not using Vite for one reason, you can still use the CLI or PostCSS. Now with PostCSS, you might want to continue using this in case you're doing other manipulations of your CSS. For example, using SAS and the SAS compiler, PostCSS still does that really well. But we're going to use Vite because I'm not doing any of those things. And if we go over to our package.json now, just to show you, both of these packages have been brought in, and they're both alpha 30. That's an important idea here is these are very early versions. Now that we have the packages, we're going to need to integrate it here into our vconfig. And all this requires is for us to bring in Tailwind CSS. And that's the Tailwind CSS from the Vite integration. And we just need to add it to our plugins. So Tailwind CSS, make sure and execute it because it is a function that it's exporting here. Now that we have it hooked up, we need to actually make it work. Now, if you remember, the way you would do this before is go into something like your main CSS. Now, in main.js, the start of my application, I'm importing that CSS, and that is being processed by Tailwind because of that Vite integration. And so if I go back to the main CSS, what I used to have to do is say Tailwind core, et cetera, right? No longer necessary. Instead of inventing their own CSS pieces, they're actually just going to tell you to import Tailwind CSS. It's the only line that's necessary. And this sort of hints at some of the new philosophy, and that is to do less inventing of the own, less inventing of their own semantics and try to lean on the underlying CSS language as well as other JavaScript sort of things. So now that we've added that, over in dev, we can see it's updated it. And now our application still works, but because we're using Tailwind, it has reset 
all the looks and feels, but it still works, right? It's still the page as you would expect it to be, but it just looks really ugly. The key here is not just that everything lost its styling, but also that it's now sans serif instead of the default font. But now we're going to want to make it look prettier. So I'm going to start with my app.view because that's where that header is up here. And I'm going to want my header to have a couple of things. So I'm going to add a class here and say background, let's say slate 900. So it's nice and dark. And I'm going to make the text white. I'm going to give it a little padding. And I'm going to say full width of the page. If we come back here, we can now see that we have that big piece, but of course it's not very pretty. So let's come down here. And let's also put in there, in this, and if you've done Tailwind before, this should be very familiar. I'm just going to say justify between, and I'm just going to make this a little bigger. Text 2XL, font bold, right? Now we have what's starting to look like a real, honest to God, website, right? So we can see this working, it's getting these pieces, but how does it know what files to look for? You probably are used to having a Tailwind configuration file. And in this early preview, they've actually turned off the configuration file so they can gather some usage. Because one of the things they're trying to do is not have to specify where your content is. It's going to look in your project and find everywhere it thinks the code should be. And it does this in two ways. In the V implementation, it actually looks at the tree of dependencies that it builds when it does this compilation and looks at all those files. So it's only going to look in files that are actually going to be used. And it also uses git ignore. So this is why it's not processing things like node modules, right? So it's using those two pieces right now to indicate what it should be looking for, not looking for. And their goal is not to have to specify it, though we may find out at a later date that when the configuration file comes back, that might be useful. Configuration file isn't going away completely. They're just trying to use it today for the auto content searching. So let's go ahead and open that home view. If we come down here, we'll see that we've got this section that is the header. And we kind of want this actually in a nested element because I'm going to use it as a left side. And I'm going to do that by just surrounding it with a side. That is a type that HTML knows about. And I'm saying that this should be on the side and this should take the rest of the project. And so we can, of course, come here to the section and just add some things for full width flex and then in our side we can do some things as well about sizing but if we look at this now we can see that we're getting this entire left section and this is just taking the rest of the page we could get into showing these in grids and all of that but to make this a little easier i want to talk about another feature so here i have that aside there's an h1 and sometimes i want to be able to re reuse some of this stuff in a larger project and so like before, you can use layers, and you could still use those same layers. I'm going to use the utility layer. And I could certainly come over here and say aside. Let's say at apply. Background slate, let's say 100 and rounded. And if you can see here, you can see that there's a light gray here. I'll make it actually... Let's actually make it amber 700 text white and let's give it a little padding. Right, much in the way you might think about it, you have these different buttons and such. But coming in CSS and you have probably used to this in other systems like SAS and less, it also supports nesting now. So instead of having to use one of the languages if you just need nesting, especially since nesting is coming to CSS soon, we can go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and say h1, apply, font bold, text, Excel, and white space, 
no wrap. Come back here, we can see that we now have that Bechtel test there. It's not wrapping, and we have these three buttons that we haven't really done anything with yet. And so let's go ahead and do those as well. Let's just say button inside this aside, they're all going to have backgrounds, slate 500, hover, background, slate 400, text white, font bold, right? And let's go ahead and tell it to also be the width full. So now we have the buttons acting like buttons, and let's go ahead and also put a margin y of one, just so we have a little separation. And let's round them just to make me happy. And so we now have these working in sort of the way we want them to as well. And what you, I want you to notice is the nesting. So what happens to the aside h1s and buttons is that what we're actually getting out of it is aside h1 and then applying these pieces, aside on its own is applying these pieces, and then it's a side button. And you can continue to nest these in. And I find it a lot easier when I'm using apply, which is not what I'm doing for every case. But you can see the benefit in being able to do this, that this becomes a lot more readable how the different elements are related. Some tools use some indention to sort of imply this, but I like the way this is that it's always going to be this inside this and this inside this. The last thing I want to talk about is theming. Now, if you don't have a configuration file, how are you going to do themes? Well, in the next version, themes, while I suspect for backward compatibility, the configuration file will be supported. But I really want people to be doing themes in the CSS itself. So let's say I'm going to make a theme here for my project. And I'm going to do this by just setting some variables that we're going to know. So like font family sans, which is one of the styles we're using. In fact, it's the default styles. I'm going to say comic sans ms, comma, sans serif. And let's put quotes around these because they always prefer not to have spaces in the font names. And let's make a brand new color, color brand. And let's make that corn flower blue. Once I've added these in the theme, I can go right back up here and say, you know what? Let's go ahead and make the button background. You have these couple buttons here. Let's make them class equals background brand. There's our brand. See everything now because we changed it for serif is now using Comic Sans. And uh, I think that probably looks good enough, right? And so this is going to change a little bit in the way we use Tailwind configuration-wise, but it really isn't going to change the way we actually write Tailwind classes at all. It may make it a little easier, especially if you want to be using CSS to define these instead of CSS and JavaScript, which is sort of the format they were using before. These end up just being calculated variables, now, in the case of this, it might just be using that variable itself inside the code, but it is doing some generation, like when you want to create things like new colors or new font names or whatever it is. But all of that can be specified in a theme here. And there is support for replacing the theme versus extending the theme by default. That It's going to extend it since that's very much the main use case. So let's wrap this up. Tailwind, which I've loved working with for a long time, is trying to mature beyond its initial ideas. And I like that, that it's working on performance as well as making some things easier for us. Having to talk people through and explain how the content mapping was done, how you have to maybe hide some, include others, it can be a little confusing. And because we already have this object graph and we already have the git ignore, it becomes a pretty easy way to handle that. I really love that they're moving a lot of this into CSS and as standard of CSS as it possibly can. The idea that we're importing from Tailwind instead of having these sections that are going to be expanded on, I think is a great idea. Using layers doesn't go away. Introducing things like nested selectors and then finally being able to theme in CSS without having to figure out what the magic name 
from the theme is that you just be able to put it in. It's going to do the right thing. Make sense? Well, I'm obliged to put another like and subscribe here. Remember, next week I'm going to be doing a comparison between Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, and Rider for C Sharp developers. So go ahead and subscribe if you want to be notified about that. Thanks for joining me. I'm Sean Wildermuth for Coding Shorts.